Hello my friends, how are you? So I'm starting to get some of the decals on this border Focker Wolf here and they are extremely thin. You're going to need to be very careful when you're putting these things on. And you can see there I've got these ones on here which start to look pretty cool. But uh, these ones here are under a Mr. Color satin varnish. So they're extremely thin and they are very difficult to apply. But you can see there, it really blends in well to the actual model. And uh, they've got a really good sink factor. You can see all the uh, rivet holes there. They sink very well and blend into the model very well. But you need to do it properly. You can't muck around with these ones. You're gonna need, really gonna need a decal setter. I use this MIG one also use this one I've just run out this one I'd say is probably a little bit better quality but this job does the job just fine but yeah if you can get this stuff this is the best now I'll tell you exactly what I sort of learned with these border ones so um, I'm dipping it in 70 degree water so that's you know you out of your hot tap 70 degree water for about 20 seconds and then I take it out and you're gonna you know, I just let it sort of the water come off a little bit on my little paper thing here. I just glue paper to my workbench. And it's really good as a cutting table and all that kind of stuff, and it sucks up water. So um yeah, I get rid of the water, but then I get this stuff and a cotton bud, and the area you're going to apply, you need to absolutely saturate it in this stuff. So you want to be seeing, you know, a lot of this stuff on it. Alright. A uh, heap of it. So you, you want to dip your thing a few times, come along, in, dip again, put some more on, <laughs> dip again, put some more on, and just make sure it's really saturated. Uh, don't worry too much about the cost of your stuff and all that kind of stuff, because if these start to stick before you move it, you, you're done. All right. So if you put it on a really good surface of this stuff, it'll still be able to move around. And then when you've got it into the position that you like. Then you can start pushing the corners out you know or the moisture out, out and start to stick it with your cotton bud so yeah when you've got it in position then you start to hit the corners hit the corners start getting the first bit of thing out then you can start rolling it on rolling it on getting all that moisture out and then it'll start to bond and then after that you can get more of this decal setter and really start to get that on there let it soak and let it, it'll really suck into your model you see you've got the little ones there it says do not touch i think in german there's two options do not adjust and do not touch that you can put on there but um i just applied this one here so this one's got no satin varnish over the top and it's starting to sink into those little bolt holes but even without it satin varnish it, it does blend very well now you've got these ones under here see that it no matter which angle you sort of look at it from it comes up pretty good So I'm really having a great time, but there's so many decals to apply. I've, I've added all the ones that, the personalized ones, and now I'm going to come across along and do all these ones, put these ones in. So all this stuff here will go over the top of the personalized decals. These ones were horrible to put on. Oh, not horrible, they were just hard. It's just hard to get it straightened up. But um, when I was, trying to roll it and apply it some parts would come up with it so i did lose a few bits but that's all right it adds to the charm i suppose um starting to add there's just a tiny little bit of metal chip in here where you know the, the guys will be moving around on the airplane not a hell of a lot though because um these were constantly worked on. They would fly them back down from combat and, and really work on them and fix them up for the next mission. Because you, you, you don't want to mess around with um, 
your your aircraft safety when you're flying these things around. Like a tank, yeah, it'll go out to combat and stay out there for weeks on end without you know any kind of maintenance or anything like that. And then if something went wrong or whatever, they'd come and work on it, fix it up, get it back into action. But these things were worked on a lot more. Yeah, because if anything goes wrong in the sky, it's it's all over. But what a beautiful plane, eh? But um, I started sanding back the this one here so we can uh, repaint it. But you can see how thin the decals are that Border give you. See there, that's half sort of sanded off. And how much it's blended into the actual paint job. Sunk into the actual paint job. So a lot of care is needed when you are applying them. Hopefully this will have to rebuild it. I, when I was sanding it up and all that, a lot of this part started to come off, which is good, I suppose. I can rebuild it. Um, but I wasn't as good at building things back in the day. Probably didn't, you know, properly squeeze those parts together. But yeah, really cool, eh? Really having a great time. And the instruction here is really good. Like they're really, um, really helpful with this page here. Instead of putting it all on the one uh, painting page, you know. And this painting page here is easy to follow. The painting pages are useless. Don't even follow those guides. Uh, just you know, you call out your own colors and and follow those patterns or whatever. But yeah, don't use the colors they're called out there because they're all wrong. That'd be a cool one to do, eh? I'm not quite sure how I'd go about doing the checkered pattern. Making up some squares of uh, masking tape, I suppose, but there's so many angles and shape. It's just, uh, maybe I'll get another one later and, and do that. But this is the one I did. Joseph Priller's aeroplane. You can see there, looks like my one. Yeah, pretty cool, eh? And um, we'll have a look at the other side. Really nice, eh? But I'm also working on some figures for the Panzer IV. We'll get the figures on and we can really get this finished and maybe even into a diorama. On the uh, Eastern Front, around Nikopol, 1943. Like this one here. I haven't finished this one, but I've got some you know, cool little things on. This came off the box of the these guys' box. And I'll also show you around the back here. I've got some cool little things like, you know, what, you know mini art, master box, put my name, a little picture. And I just need an ICM one. Put that on there, because I use the ICM machine gun. And that'll be really cool. So we're all responsible for building it. Bloody nice track dive over in here. Really nice. But yeah, what I'm trying to do at the moment is become good at figure painting. So I'm over here just watching my tablet. So I've got my tablet there and I sit there watching that while I work away on my, my figures here. So I'm just starting to get the uh, pants done with the first collar here. That's German uh, World War II green or field grey by Valero. And then it sort of should end up like this. And with this guy here, I've only done his uniform part. I haven't done the face or anything else yet. You know, I've done the first base coats on that bag there. So I'm not going to do a leather bag. I'm going to do a canvas bag. And these boots will be, uh, a, I don't know, a light color. I'll do gray, dark gray or light gray with the... Um, gloves and of course just whatever color these things are meant to be I'm gonna go leather with the belt and with the um, ammunition carriage carrying stuff but I'm gonna have got him painting the guns separately because once he's on the tank I can just put a gun over his lap there same with this guy you know he's holding a gun in there so once he's installed we can just put that in underneath him 
I'd say. Really nice figures. These are mini art ones, so the Totem Cop Division. But I got this one uh, a while ago, so it doesn't have the resin heads, which is unfortunate. But yeah, they, they came up pretty good. So these guys are just primed so far with their black, although this black is getting used in the actual finish color. So I'm not painting, as you can see in the back here, you see the folds in the underneath will stay black a lot. But um, yeah, they come up pretty good. That's the officer. And we've got another Lancer. He can have his gun shoved up in between his legs there. And then we've got a machine gun Lancer. He's got some ammunition on his chest. He's got a MG42 with a proper MG42 leather belt. And he's also got a spare uh, gun, what do you call it? Spare gun barrel with his uh, leather strap to go with that. I like this figure. <laughs> I, I put a lot of work into him, added all these extra details because I've got these cool uh, photo etch sets with um, heaps of different straps and cool things. All right, my friends, it's good to speak to you. And I will speak to you again soon. All right, see you soon.